Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Bamboo Singing Podcast. This week, uh, we have a special guest. Um, as we all know, COVID has kind of affected everything in our lives, including um, school, right? And so we have B. Moore here with us. He is a friend. He is uh, a brother. Um, he has been in higher ed for like about six years now. Um, he also is a student's uh, success coordinator at uh, Metro State University. And uh, we just kind of wanted to get him on and um, talk about how COVID has affected schools. And maybe we can get into other things too. So um, right off the bat, B, um, how, how did you get into higher ed? And how did you get into a uh, Metro? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, before I answer that question, actually, you know, thank you all for inviting me to come and join yeah. you. Oh, yeah, guys. no problem. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I know we've known each other for uh, a couple of years. I know I probably know Apple and Goo probably, probably around the same time. Yeah. And then uh, Duck, maybe about five years now. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think we've seen oh, yeah. each other here and yep. there as well. But yep. yeah, yeah. Thanks so all for the uh, invite uh, on your podcast. Um, but yeah, yeah. Regarding your question, right? So um, student success. So how many years have i done it or what's the question six again? right okay yeah yes yeah. right, so about six years <laughs> but what led um, yeah how, how did you get into that field <clears throat> i don't know i just remember working um so i worked in a nonprofit setting for about four years and you know we did we did some academic support as well and i and i just and and also i just kept remembering you know just the support the amount of support i got when i was in college and that really because i i used to be a really like shy you know, barely talked uh, um, in, in the classroom uh, in high school, and um, um, it was the people that that came across um, to that that came and supported me um, during my college years that really just encouraged me and helped empower me, and I wanted to be able to give back and do the same thing, right, for for students as well. Um, yeah, take us. So, um, what is your role, or what's the title of your role, mm -hmm. and what do you actually do? Yeah, I'm a student <laughs> success coordinator, right? Uh, okay. Specifically for Asian American Pacific uh, Islander students. Um, so I do a lot of uh, retention focused work. Um, so um, any academic supports that the students have, uh, questions, helping students navigate the, the support services that we offer on campus, um, as well as doing um, events as well, right? That uh, support the students' needs. Um, if you know, we have students that are saying they're struggling in a particular area. You know, we could bring in an expert to talk about that, to address that particular issue. Um, yeah, so we do a lot of that. Um, we actually have a couple events come, coming out soon as well. Um, maybe if you all wanted to go post in your uh, YouTube as well. So sure. the community could definitely come and join too. Um, you know, I think we're, in my particular department, um, I'm a part of the multicultural American Indian and Retention Services um, Department. And uh, we have um, two uh, particular uh, webinars or, or events coming up um, online. So one is focused on systemic racism in the health, um, um, disparity, health disparities and so forth. And the, uh, the other one um, is uh, systemic racism and um, the corporate world and so nice. we'll, we'll be bringing in experts uh, to talk about that as well so yeah and so is that just all through zoom then or how, how yeah are it's gonna be through all, uh, <clears throat> through zoom as well because you know we have students that have expressed um concerns or concerns about you know like um yeah of course prejudice that that occurs or or um uh you know just kind of facing um struggles in various areas and how to you know just kind of struggle with soft skills or just even other areas in which it's not they're struggling in how to um further their career as well um or just even nailing that that job interview as well right yeah. and so just bringing people in to be able to address that um address certain skills that they need in order to do well in these interviews um, or even to be able to get the promotion as well yeah. Right, and how to navigate that corporate world because we know that 
you know, uh, especially if you're first generation, um, it's there's going to be a lot of jargon that that you know some other individuals they grew up and they're used to and you're not, you know, and so you're going to learn all that as well. Um, there's also going to be, um, you know, uh, a different culture, right? You know, than you're used to, and so to be able to gain those skills in order to um, adapt to their culture or even change some of that culture yeah. as well. So a lot of the students that you're you're um, helping in your um, I'm talking to are they first generation now? Because I know when we when I went to college, I mean the majority of my my friends in my group were all first generation um, college students, right? Yeah, yeah. So I would say, um, you know, from from memory, I would say maybe half, mm-hmm. or maybe I would say even more than that. Maybe sixty to seventy percent of the students I've met are. Uh, first generation college going sure. students um and understand like metro state i think the the average age is about um 30 years old mm-hmm. right so um we have some of the students that are right out of high school uh, as well as we have those that you know have been working for years um and uh, want to come back and either get their four-year degree or changing their careers um I believe college also provides a lot of those um, soft skills that you need. Um, definitely on like how do you um, just voice your thoughts, right? Um, share your thoughts, your opinions on a particular topic, particular project. Um, you know, uh, discover what your strengths are, right? You know, um, you're going to get put in a bunch of different situations and you're going to have to navigate that and you're going to learn okay this is what i like this is what i don't like this is what i'm afraid of maybe this is what i should work on right but this is also my strength that i could continue to improve on and focus on um as well and then college has a multitude of support right if if that the college you're going to and you reach out to some individuals nobody's willing to help you that's switched to a different place you know but college has a lot of support systems um, in place and uh, i believe not a lot of people take advantage of that right so yeah i cert uh, when i went to college i certainly did not take <laughs> advantage of the support system like i probably talked to a counselor maybe twice you know and i think the other thing about college i regret is um and now that i look back i feel like college um a, a lot of it was the experience and a lot of it is almost a social club because you don't realize how mm-hmm. much you're gonna lean on the people that you um you meet in college after college right yeah. and i i went into college thinking i have to just be in my books you know and so i stayed mm-hmm. away from the clubs i stayed away from um doing any projects like that because i'm like i just want to be in my books and get my grade and get out of college right Mm -hmm. and i think that's my biggest regret because i ended up not finishing right and it's because i freaking hated it Mm -hmm. i stayed home every day and and so i was gonna go uh into pre-pharmacy so i had to take all the science classes and i thought i was a smart kid so i took (laughs) i took biology and chemistry together in the in the first semester big mistake don't do that right but um just being in my books and not taking advantage of all the, all the support systems and then the social club quote yeah unquote, definitely right? the, the network piece right? the network yeah, piece, that's yeah. really important in college um and you, you know you could come out and you you people who you were in class with um one day they might be the ones interviewing you right yeah um, <laughs> as well one day they might be the one that hey like I have, you know, our my company, the the place where I'm working at also has a position open. I could be a reference for you as well. So all that network, all that connection yeah. is really important. And I know because of COVID, right, that sort of limited social oh. yeah, uh, interaction gets kind of limited. So we're trying to explore different ways and how students can have an opportunity to, yeah. you know, come together, you know, online and, and just kind of network and get to know each other a bit more and and kind of see where that goes so So not to take us like completely you know 180 but like i want to ask you you know because mainstream media when they talk about like 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 races at school like you know obviously like the asians are kind of like up there in terms of like the learning curve or so um like harvard right like they stopped accepting a lot of asians just because of how how many there there are at the college and mainstream media 
paints this picture or they have this um, idea that like Asians are, are well off, but not necessarily for Southeast Asians, right? And because you deal with uh, Asian Pacific Islander, I, what's your take on that? Like, does the Asian students that do come to college, do you feel like they're prepped for college? Like, just as, as much as what the media is saying? Or do you feel like they're a lot, they struggle a lot more than the other kids? Um, you know, I think, I think what we're kind of addressing, like, I don't know much about the Harvard case, mm -hmm. um, but the, mo the model minority myth, right. Yeah. Where you, you mm -hmm. believe, you know, and because of all these stats that come out like, oh, like Asians are doing so well, they earn a whole lot more. Right. From the East but Asians. yeah, but you don't understand like Asians is broad. Like, yeah. Like Iran, uh, you know, right. or <laughs> Iran uh, all the way to, you know, Russia, yeah, you know, Russians, includes, yeah, uh, like all that stuff as well. Right. <clears throat> all those different countries. And so, um, and then, and then you aren't able to desegregate that data. Mm -hmm. Um, by ethnicity you know and so um yeah like students who who struggle especially uh, a large portion of our southeast asian americans who are first generation you know you're not gonna be able to you know separate that number as easily i know there's been some work by the coalition of asian american leaders that cal you know yep. um that um i think thanks a lot for for their work as well and they've been working on um trying to desegregate the data as well so Definitely check them out uh, as yeah. well. They'll have more info, but yeah, yeah. But just uh, just based off your like 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 experience. So my my own personal experience, mm -hmm. um, I do see a lot more Southeast Asian Americans, um, and yeah, I you know I feel like um, it probably falls more on the whether you're first generation mm -hmm. or second generation mm -hmm. college going student, right? So your first generation, um, usually, um, you know, not all the time, but usually you might not have that support system at, at necessarily at home or just that knowledge or an experience on how to navigate college, right? But, you know, I see a lot of them, once they get those tools, they're able to do really well. Yeah. What you're talking about soft skills, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, what soft skills do Asian Pacific Islanders struggle with? most um leaving college and going into the workforce that you see or or you're trying to build up that tool or for them to be equipped going into the workforce what are they usually struggling the most with um two things come to mind um one is and, and they both focus on speaking up right um one is being able to ask questions or or uh, when they need help right uh, being able to seek for help mm -hmm. um the second one is um uh, just being able to voice their opinions openly yeah. you know, mm -hmm. versus behind the scenes or um you know whenever you're in a meeting with a group of you know four or five people um and i see this happening within myself um is i sit back and i, I like to kind of contemplate and think you know um before i respond but by the time you want to respond you, we've already moved on to, to next the next topic, uh, yeah. right and then i might be like okay well i'll i'll save this particular idea and i'll could talk to this individual later on you know but and uh, the current political uh, the current culture right uh, uh, of of um uh, work environments, they, you know, some individuals see that as weakness, you know, it's like, oh, you're not being willing to, to really share the best idea, you're scared, or you're not, you know, uh, you don't have any ideas, right? But, but that's not true. You know, I think I, a lot of our students have wonderful ideas, they just, sometimes they want they like to contemplate yeah. first, and, and um, maybe one day we're able to find a balance between those two. Yeah. So we're always blaming Confucian, Confucius, <laughs> right? Because, uh -huh. you know, Asians come from this uh, this background of like uh -huh. Confucius thinking or uh, teaching where, you know, we're, we're taught to, uh, to uh, obey our elders and uh -huh. uh, don't speak unless you're spoken to. And, and so do you think, it does stem kind of from that or or do you think it's just a personality thing or like you know i'm, I'm sure culture definitely has um something to do with it as well 
I'm not an expert in the area, yeah. but but yeah. you know, I think just my own personal experience, I believe culture yeah. has a lot um, to do with it. Uh, you you know how you were brought up, yeah, um, right. um, your family culture, your your community culture, your ethnic culture, right? Because um, I know being Hmong, right? You know, you're you're taught that like you shouldn't speak up, you should listen. You know, just my own personal experience of like yeah and maybe y'all could relate as well just being lectured for like hours right you know <laughs> by your parents and and you're not allowed to say anything you know and um, no you too uh. <laughs> right and then and then when you're told to go to school and you're told to listen to, to the teacher and don't speak up as well and so yeah. um and we're used to that particular system right going up where there's one individual that stands in front and they just continue to feed you with yeah, all, all the information, info, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and you're not allowed to speak back. And uh, and that in college won't get you a good grade, right? Yeah. You know, and you, um, it, I struggle with that, right? I struggle with, I'm like, you know, why can't you just give me all the info? And let me just write it all down. <laughs> and I do the homework and I turn it in, you know, and, and that would just, but I realize that's not gonna, that kid, those skills could only take me so far, right? I need to develop more of that um um the skills to be able to speak up as well um and voice my thoughts openly um and i would say that's kind of what pushed me to speak up more in college it was that that a anger started bubbling up right because you if you're silent other people will speak for you you yeah. know um and i remember i was in one class and they started talking about a particular issue within a particular issue about this particular in this particular book i'm not gonna say what the issue yeah. was but um um i remember they were like well the i was the only asian american in this particular classroom and they're like you know um i believe the asian american community really has this particular issue and, and this was coming from a white student right uh or, or, or a classmate and i was like and then they started like agreeing like oh yeah like this is what we see too i'm like what the heck like in my mind i was like that is not what i see in my community mm -hmm. like that is so fake you know that's <clears throat> that's false right well that's not real that's not true in my community my uh, monk community um but i was like you know just so scared i, I didn't want to say anything you know and then and then i, I remember just coming out of that class realizing like dang like these people, like other people who don't know much about Asian Americans are coming out of that class believing whatever, who, who, right, right. Who, whoever else spoke for, you know, for the community, you know, and, and it, it, you know, may not be true, right? It's open to their interpretation. Yeah, of yeah, how they yeah, see yeah. Or yeah. view us. And yeah, that, yeah. Right? And it might even, um, you know, like su support secures their biases that mm -hmm. they've already have. And, mm -hmm. and, yeah, that's kind of what really helped push me. And I, I just remember, and then, of course, also having people in college who are willing to just support you and encourage you. I remember having a professor, having a classmate say, hey, like, be like, you know, uh, be so quiet, you know, saying that in one of the class. Um, Straight and, up to you? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but we're part of, he was Filipino and, and, and we're all part of this other smaller cohort group that, um, uh, supported um, students of color right and so he was just uh, uh, voicing his opinion like that and and um, I remember the professor saying hey like give B two three more years and B will be the loudest out of any one <laughs> yeah. of y'all right you know and and yeah. at first I was like man I don't know you know because I don't know if that's gonna be true but he's like college will change you you know and, and they definitely changed me it got me to be able to speak up more yeah so that, yeah because that, that's a good point you made right because um having been around like the whole i think it's a culture thing too right because having been i can't speak for all asians so being moan I'll, I'll just speak from my experience like being around that environment like you want to i introduce my son into that world it doesn't necessarily i don't think it's necessarily college that's going to change you i think you just gotta like put yourself in that world right like so when he started playing basketball and as a kid he was really shy and one thing i did notice too is that like so when he first started playing he was that shy he was that b right he was that shy kid um when the coach would say hey uh who here can shoot and you 
the kids that I know for sure can't shoot because I, I've watched them are all raising their hands. Hey, man, I can shoot. You know, so they're taking the shots and missing it big time. And he's just sitting there waiting. Right. And mm -hmm. I think throughout the years, he's learned to speak up. Yeah. And yeah. kind of like take charge. Yeah. So like the environment, the environment definitely yep. does change you. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it's unique to just college, but like, I, I'd say you can start him as young as as you want right yeah 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 so so it takes that whole setting right mm -hmm. i it wasn't until i was placed in a setting that would empower me mm -hmm. to be able to speak up right um and i didn't get that empowerment at home i didn't get that empowerment you know and at least in, in the previous education that i've that i've had um but in college i did and right. so that really helped me thrive and helped me become a much better individual i know there was this recent study um I forgot who the author was, but it was done by um, a professor, instructor at uh, a college in w Wisconsin, and um, it was done among students. And they they asked um, uh, among students like what kind of help empowered them, or like the students that were kind of struggling, like what was going on, you know, what were their experiences back in in high school and so forth. And and a lot of uh, the male among students expressed that. They weren't ever encouraged by their teachers, mm. but the female Hmong students uh, expressed that they were encouraged by their fem female teachers, right? And so um, I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, you, you see that trend where uh, a lot of uh, female uh, Hmong students are, are doing so much better in higher education. Um, and I, I don't know if that's, you know, the, the main reason as well, you know. Um, I know there's... Um, um, other it may be other reasons as well um and it, it requires more research into it too but how uh how critical and how important important is it to pick a career path that like would give you the best opportunities afterwards because i see like i'll see a kid or a college student who just kind of decides hey i'm gonna go into a field that even the average joe like me don't even know what they do Mm -hmm. and 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 yes i mean to get away from the whole doctor lawyer thing but like you know is 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 it is your selection of a career path how important is that too um you know it depends if you want to go into a career field that's gonna that you need a certificate you need a license for mm -hmm. right then you should be pretty focused on where right. you want to go <clears throat> Um, but if you're really unsure, um, I would say the best degrees to get, you know, my, my personal opinion is um, a psychology, sociology degree, right? Just because you're going to get a lot of this, you're going to learn a lot of the skills and how to work with or how human function, how, how your brain functions, how p people behave. Um, you're going to do a lot of, um, writing as well. Um, and so you're going to gain a lot of the skills you need in order to be successful in all, in almost any yeah. career field. Um, and, um, yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of, um, at least jobs that I've, I've, uh, I've looked into, right. Um, when I first graduated from, from college required, like a psychology, sociology, or like some sort of human services degree, and so having that, um, I think the the um, uh, the um, those skills are able to translate in almost any career field, um, except for if you want to go into IT, you know, you're gonna have to <laughs> guilty, yeah, yeah. Guilty. <laughs> um, you know, of course, a I I believe somebody who who you know possibly has a lot of majors in psychology and decides to go into uh, or like sociology or human services, right? Uh, especially human services and goes into IT and works in the front desk will have better customer service. That's why yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. maybe it would have cus better customer service. Than no, anything. even in the IT field, like um, I feel like a, a lot of the times and, and, and this is changing, right? Where uh, soft skills didn't matter, right? It, it didn't matter. Um, because if you were a good, if you were a good coder, or if you knew, um, if you knew your way around um, IT, right, uh, you were able to get in, you know. And and we've all gotten that one IT guy 
that is like he seems like a jerk because he he uh he doesn't know how to talk to you or he's very straightforward very cold very short right they're good at what they do yeah they're I super think. good yeah they're <laughs> super good at what they do right um but they suck at at people, uh, people. Skills. yeah with people's skills and they suck at communicating and so but then you're seeing that um uh, that change right now because i remember when i went to us bank um the one thing that they looked at the most was if you had the soft skills right yeah. and um that's how i kind of got into it was us bank kind of said okay um looks like you have people skills yeah. and we're just going to take you on right and yeah. so they kind of took me on and that's that's where that's how i got started right um, but yeah, uh, those skills even translate over to the IT world now, right? So yeah. I think anywhere you go, I mean, right now we're having we're having issues at work. You know, where we have a cl- we have an on site clinic, and the number one uh, issue that like everyone has with the physicians or the you know the PA are that they lack the people skill, mm-hmm. right? It's not the fact that they can't diagnose you or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. It's not their the rate of diagnosis. It's actually they lack the humility. Mm. They lack the people skill to talk to you. Because obviously when you go up there, it's because you're concerned right, about your health. Yeah. And the last thing I need to do is go up there and get yelled at. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? And so like, I want someone that <clears throat> knows and, and can make me reassure me and make me feel better when I'm up there. So I, I feel like at the, as I get older, right? Mm-hmm um the people skills the emotional intelligence the iq the EQ, or EQ, 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 yep. has dominated you know um in leadership positions over the iq because now i'm like people don't care how much how intelligent i am right or all they want to know is can i influence people mm-hmm. can i talk to people mm-hmm. and bring them in corral them in and that's your emotional intelligence where you learn how to navigate those people and those soft mm-hmm. skills mm-hmm. and and going back to what you're saying i'm like the asian kids uh, and not majority but w- we just go into communications and you will <laughs> everything will translate and change for you because you are you have been working hard You know, and you are intelligent and you have been working with that doctor, doctor or lawyer mindset. And so it's but it's the soft skills going back to that. And for me, I know that what has led me to more open doors was not my intelligence, but how I know how to navigate, read people and deal with people Mm -hmm. is what has changed the game for me. And so what so what was your transition like because i remember the first time i met you you were that quiet kid i was extremely uh, i'm yeah. introverted right mm-hmm. I, I can put all these labels i'm quiet i'm shy i don't even talk i stutter like i grew up with a stutter mm-hmm. and I, I think going back to what duck and you know b you're saying environment changed me i went to a, a bible college in ohio where it's predominantly black is culture shock changed you and you had to get social um it forced you out of your comfort zone and mm-hmm. and for me I think I wanted experience over academics. I didn't care about how great the school was in academics. I wanted a change in experience. And I think that led me to being a little bit more social and engaging and Mm -hmm. being um, able to press into, you know, navigate people's skills. And so for me, even though I am more on the introverted spectrum, I don't allow that to dominate or label me to limit me to be like, no, I just don't like people. I don't like talking to people, Hmm. but, um, now doing human services for, you know, for what I do. And, um, and, and so I think environment definitely changes you and you, you can't limit yourself to this is who I am. I'm a take on this identity and that's all I'm ever be like, I'm Asian. I should be quiet. I should stay quiet. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think for me, there was a lot of experiences, you know, bad experiences i had that had to i had to you know kind of speak up you know use my voice because i like you was in those positions where like people are speaking for me i'm like no that's not my experience Mm -hmm. right and i'm not gonna allow someone to dictate how they feel from their bias um you know of what i'm experiencing in this Mm -hmm. and so i think being in those situations has allowed me to be more comfortable and standing firm to be like no, this is my experience and this is real. 
Um, but also I'm not tied down to an identity or a belief that, you know, that I can't, I can't be on the same standard of emotional intelligence or be able to not be in leadership position like other people, because you see that and you're like, well, someone needs to pave the way for some Asian kid to come along and be like, no, there are, you know, people in, you know, upper management that can handle, you know, how to deal with, you know, uh, people instead of, you know, just sitting in the it behind IT desk. Sorry, I, that's, I know that's <laughs> not what you do all day. But that I think for me, there has there has to be that like I was tired of people speaking up for me and those experiences. Yeah. And so, yeah. I, I do wonder. So it seems like um, the college experience changed a lot of your perspective and, and the way you you saw yourself. Right. But but how does COVID affect students now that are going to college? Right. Do they still do they still have um, opportunities to like be in those environments? Like uh, how, how has that changed? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure they, they still do definitely in the classrooms, you know, um, encouraging these students, like, you know, tell them, tell them students to, to, hey, like, you know, make sure to show your your face on, on Zoom, right? Rather than just mm -hmm. having, like, your name show up on there. or So make sure, making sure video, if, if it's possible, right? Because uh, being conscious that, you know, some, stu some students don't have the necessary like the fast being internet to be able to do video and mm, and yeah. to be able to talk and and uh, you know but if you're able to right you know definitely show your face on there and show that you're you're engaged um you know um be ready to unmute <laughs> you know and, and speak up right so so in the classroom i think i believe students um that the classroom setting whether it's virtual or in person it's, it's it's still there so it still creates an opportunity um another opportunity and in, in, in is um uh classroom like discussion like blogs or boards or, or uh, that um you might be assigned to do right you know responding to other classmates responses you know so um taking advantage of that as well um uh, to do that so there's plenty of of opportunities that they could still do um in their particular course um and then the other will be definitely i think it, it's more of of um um you know just finding opportunities that they could just be able to engage in and network and and then you know meet others other yeah. classmates you know because i i'm also a uh, co-advisor for uh student club at metro as well Hmong student organization and so that has created opportunities for students to just be able to engage and you know it's almost like a good at least when you come to those events a good escape from a lot of what's been going on in 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 our, our um, country today right you know or even escape from just all the stress of covid um as well um like we had like a you know scare story night you know that was really mm -hmm. fun we <laughs> had um like a moment new year online <laughs> yeah you know and so it was just a really good escape for students to um be able to go and just enjoy and relax and you know um, i'm hoping that at least it did some self-care and yeah you know it helps students kind of recover yeah. From yeah i really i really hope that um you know all this COVID thing would would quickly you know hopefully we can quickly find a solution for this so that the kids can go back to school mm. i feel because especially like at the younger age, right? You know, not necessarily college, but like the the great the, the elementary school grade kids. I think that's when they're most impressionable. And I don't, as a parent, I don't want to wait until my kids get into college to find out that, hey, this is where I'm lacking. Mm -hmm. And now wait for the uh, opportunities, you know, whereas hopefully everybody could start them young. Mm -hmm. And so that by the time they got get to the college world, they're already prepared. They already can utilize all the necessary support systems that are put out there for them. Yeah. My wife teaches. And even at her level, she's a teacher. So she's beyond college. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's got her master's, too. So she gets to, she gets to her career field. And uh, one of the t more tenured um, faculty members that she works with tells her, hey, you know, 
one thing that I noticed that like the minority kids, especially mostly the Hmong, the Hmong families, <clears throat> they lack is they lack the ability to to utilize a lot of the stuff that's out there to help them, right? And um, because they don't have the wherewithal to do it, don't expect the other folks to say, "Hey, you're not taking advantage of this that we have here for you," because they're not going to do that for you too. You know, it's not really their job. Um, and, and maybe uh, they don't even think about it. You know, maybe they don't even understand that. Hey, they need help. So start young, get them ready. I think that's pr pretty ideal. That's why I can't wait for my kids to go back to school. You know, so would you, um, you know, what kind of advices would you give to any upcoming college kids? Um, definitely, um, learn how to, uh, the number one advice would be put in hours for homework time, mm -hmm. right? As though it's another class. Um, so you might be like, well, you're taking four courses or your fifth course is, you know, assign a day, a time, you know, or um, multiple days uh, within the week uh, with a time frame and say, hey, that's your fifth course is to do your assignments. Yeah. Um, so put that in your schedule, block it out, right? Um, um, so yeah, being organized in that, um, learning how to schedule a time for you to, to focus. Um, cause it, you know, an advice I received from a uh, mentor once, um, um, was, uh, college students, you are you, the poorest of the poor, right? Because you are short on money, on time, <laughs> you know, especially first generation, right? You're short on uh, money and time. Um, and so you really have to make sure um, you know how to spend your money wisely and also how to spend your time wisely. Um, so, yeah, those are the two definitely uh, advice I would give students. Uh, but, yeah, definitely black out time, um, especially if you want to, you know, get involved in uh, an extracurricular activity as well, like a student club, like black that out in your schedule. Just say, hey, that is your, your course time for that particular like I tell my the, the Hmong student uh, organization um, um, board members, right? Like I say, well, you got to treat it as though it's a course, you know, like block out time where you're going to do the work for that you need to do for, for the organization. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, yeah, because we're creatures of habit, right? You know, yeah. and, and so we got to, if we're already good at going to our class, right, then let's create another class for um, uh, doing homework, another class for, you know, doing some other extracurricular activities too. Kind of two stories that I would like to share. And um, they're not necessarily like embarrassing stories, but they are like, it brought me, like it just made me realize that I'm still like this world, you know, like still not perfect, you know. A like teaching still, moment, so to speak? Yeah, yeah, you could say so. Um, and it was, you know, it was kind of sad, but like two moments, like one, I remember I worked for this um, organization um, and I would go into the high school, it's like working with pre-college students, right? And I remember I was walking down, so I'm already an adult, right? You know, older adult and I'm walking um, and I was in a high school and this high school is, I would say, like 60% Asian American, right? Um, and I remember um, just walking. I was by myself walking through the hallway, and there was a group of, of high school kids. And they were all, they were part of the hockey team, right? They're all, all white, like at least, you know, from what I could see, they were all white. And I remember, so this is a 60% Asian American high school going through it and then one of the high school um, um, hockey players said hey what you looking at you've never seen a bunch of white guys here together right and it made me realize and he was like you know go on your way right you know and to I you was like yeah and so i just remember realizing man like even in a high school with this uh, many um, um asian americans you could still be belittled by you know um um a group of just yeah like the, the, the it the the 
almost the 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 white privilege, right? Still overshadows you, you know. Um, so you you are the majority in this group. Yeah, yeah, but yet, school. but that yet too. you still feel so you know you felt mm. so belittled. So yeah, I remember that happened, um, and I was just like, what the heck, dude? Like you know. Um, and then another situation was when I was in college, you know, I'm a staff. I have my full gear suit, you know, with my name badge. And I remember just walking through and it was just I was just by myself. And there were these college students sitting um, by the computers and I was walking by and then they turned to me. They're like, Konnichiwa, started laughing. Right. And of course, I'm not Japanese, you know, and they just, you know, you know, and, 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 and uh, took off. Right. So I'm just like, man, like, you know, um, it it's still like, you know, it just hits you like, man, like that racism that, you know, it's still there, you know. Um, and I, I'm hoping that um, one day, like, you know, my kids grow up, they don't have to deal with that or, um, you know. And of course, like it also helps me to realize, like, I still need to work on building that resiliency to be, to be able to keep fighting, to keep going, right? You know, to prove them wrong and yeah. to say, like, hey, like we are the future, you know, of of America. You know, it's going to be much more diverse, um, multi ethnic, um, you know, mix, and uh, you know, we still have all these great values that and, and principles that. Will make this country better so yeah that's yeah. good cool good note um b we appreciate you coming on this podcast it's a little long in the tooth here but we just appreciate you and just your wisdom and um helping you know just asian uh pacific islander young people navigate you know the college life and um propel them to succeed in life so we just appreciate you know you coming on here and sharing your wisdom and everything else and so but that's all we got for today Thank you, B, for coming on. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of The Bamboo Ceiling, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review on iTunes. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at hashtag The Bamboo Ceiling. Until next time, use your voice.